There we go, hit that nice and solid. 160 yards of the nine iron, dead straight, nice little draw on it. I'm not gonna do much better than that. I gotta tell you, a lot of times I know that I've stayed in my posture by how it feels when I contact the golf ball. Let me explain why staying, getting out of your posture is such a problem and there's one thing, two pieces to it, but one thing that can really fix that for you. And most people never get there because it's not actually staying in your posture that'll fix that. So if I start down a little steep, what I'll end up doing is standing up out of my posture to try to shallow that club out and I'll end up flipping. And what happens is when I stand up, notice how my hips go toward the golf ball, that drives my hands out. And then just to be able to make contact with the golf ball, my club has to go down. So instead of being more at a flatter angle like this with my club, I'm exaggerating here, my hips go toward the golf ball and I end up doing this. The shaft ends up standing up and that causes a couple problems. So realizing that if you stand up out of your posture, this will happen. It's impossible for me to get this shaft lower unless I stay in my posture. You see, if I stand up out of my posture, my hips are in the way and I can't get that club shaft down. If I stay in my posture, now all of a sudden I can get that club shaft down. That's a great thing to know. So let me walk you through the details on this and I'll give you a couple simple tips to fix it as we go through it. So number one, let's talk about how that shaft angle can really affect the direction that the ball goes. So if I have a, a piece of wood here just to demonstrate, I'm gonna put this piece of wood almost vertical, much more vertical than the shaft would be in the golf swing, but I'm gonna put the bottom edge of this straight toward the target or straight enough for demonstration purposes here. Now, as I get that shaft more vertical, what happens is it opens the face. So I'll give you an example of this. If I put this little magnet on here that shows where the face is pointing, you can see if the sole of the club, the face of the club is straight ahead, the sole of the club is flat on the ground, then this club face is pointing directly toward the target. Now, if I lift this club more vertical, the more vertical I go, the more it goes to the right. And that's because if I kept on going that way, the loft on the club would make it go farther and further to the right. The flatter I go, the more this goes to the left. In fact, if I took the club and I imagine it being perfectly, the shaft being perfectly flat with the ground, all the loft on the club would basically be making the face point directly over to the left like that. So you can really see this when you put a little piece of wood down and you start to hit shots with a square face and a straight path, but because the shaft is so vertical, that ball just goes out to the right. So you see, as I got more vertical, the ball went that way. Not because the face is open, but just because the shaft was too vertical. And I can simply lower it down like this and the opposite's gonna happen. So I get that shaft flatter. And now all of a sudden, the ball is gonna go to the left if I'll even be able to hit it here. <laughs> but yeah, that, that face is gonna be square and the ball goes dead left. So that's a great way to demonstrate how the ball is gonna take off differently just by the angle of the club shaft, even when your path and face are dead square. Even when you make a great swing direction wise, you can get a bad result. Now, another thing that's really interesting with this is when I put this ball on the ground, it becomes very clear to see that when the shaft goes more vertical, the toe of the club is lower than the heel. And what ends up happening is, if I was to dig down in the ground enough to get this ball up on the sweet spot, I would be chunking it because the toe would have to dig down in the turf. It's not unless this leading edge of the club or the bottom of the club is flat with the ground that I get the ball solid on the face. And if I went the other way, the same thing would happen, just in the opposite. Well, the great news is, I never see anyone with the club too low. Everybody I see is the club is way too vertical. So if you're thinking right now, I wonder if my club shaft is too vertical like he's saying. I wonder if I'm standing up like he's saying. I guarantee you, without a shadow of a doubt, your club is too vertical because I never see anybody, unless, you're, unless uh, you're better than a scratch player, I hardly ever see anybody with that leading edge flat. So if you're wondering, I can promise you that you need to go flatter with the club shaft. Well, that's great news to have because now that I realize that if I wanna stay in my posture, or, or if I realize that if I can just get this shaft lower, it will force me to stay in my posture. You see, if I come up out of my posture, my hips go this way and I can't get the shaft lower. If I stay in my posture, now my hips clear back out of the way and I can get the club shaft lower. So just focusing on the angle of the shaft at impact 
can make it a world difference. You don't even have to worry about the exact angle. If you're in doubt, just go lower. And you'll start to see those divots get square and square instead of those kind of cockeyed, toe-down divots. All right, so let's talk about now the two things that I would work on to feel like this happens. Number one, I would start out by taking a little bit of a wider stance. You see, as I widen my stance, and I'm going to give an example, an extreme example, but as I widen my stance, I'm getting lower to the ground. It's easier for me to swing with this club on a flatter angle. That's obviously very exaggerated, but a lot of times I see players feet too close together, especially with shorter irons, standing way too tall, and now you know they're starting staying out of their posture rather than getting down in it. That's the first thing, a little wider stance. I want some more knee bend. I want it to be athletic here with my knees, again, so I can lower the club shaft. And I don't have to worry about overdoing it because I never see anybody that overdoes it. Now third, this is the big key here. I'm gonna teach you how to use your hips. And it feels a little bit weird. You may even feel a little shaking, like some shake and bake type action happening in your hips. But if I roll my hips down and then tuck my pelvis under like this. So if my belt buckle here, you can imagine as I tuck as I tuck my butt underneath me, my belt buckle faces more up. And as I roll my pelvis down to where my butt's kind of sticking out toward the wall, all of a sudden my belt buckle goes more down. So this would be tucked under, this would be rolling it down. It's called anterior and posterior tilt. You don't have to worry about that. Just realize this, in my transition, I wanna feel like my belt buckle goes down to the ground. My butt goes out toward the wall here. And that allows me to get lower and create this room for the club shaft to be lower. So that's piece number one, wider stance, more flex, get that belt buckle down. And then piece number two is just to visualize exactly what we did with this oversized club. I actually want you to visualize the toe being up in the air. So when I come into the, this ball, I wanna feel like the toe of the club is sticking up in the air and I'm actually gonna overdo the opposite of standing up and getting it steeper. Now again, because no one ever overdoes it this way, I think you can go as stream as you want to, and if you look at your divots, if they're those nice dollar bill square divots, then you know you're not overdoing it. So a little wider stance, belt buckle down, and then I'm gonna feel like the toe of the club stays up in the air, and man, I'm gonna hit some nice, clean, solid shots. That's about as solid as I can hit one there. That felt fantastic. Again, 165 with a nine iron, I'm not gonna be able to do any better than that. Now there's one more piece of this that I think can really help to tie it all in together, and it's a video that I call Knuckle Dragger. And it's a very specific feeling on how you're gonna take this shallower angle and what your hands and arms are gonna feel like they're doing. And I found again, when people hear this, it's like a light bulb that goes off and they think, oh wow, that's a lot easier than how I was trying to do it before. Now I can get this club a lot lower. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in just one second. If you wanna see the full video, all you need to do just go ahead and click on one of those cards that come up on your screen or the link down below in the description. And make sure you don't miss this. Uh, this is a fantastic video. It's really gonna help to, to pair everything together and you can get instant access to it right now. So let's go ahead and get started. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball. So I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden I cast, I flip, and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice, when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like, as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground. 